Do you want to increase your one rep max on the big lifts like bench press, back squats, and deadlifts, but you're not sure how to break through strength plateaus? In today's episode, I'm going to teach you the exact systematic approach that we use in the 10 week transformation to boost one rep max levels by 5 to 15% in just 10 short weeks. By the end of this episode, you're going to have a proven formula to follow that will help you see real strength gains and take your lifts to the next level. Before we dive in, if you're listening to the Apple Podcast app or on Spotify, make sure you hit the follow button. And if you're watching on YouTube, make sure you hit like and subscribe below. talk about how I help people become stronger than ever before because of the exact systematic approach that we take in the 10-week transformation in order to improve people's one rep max. So we're going to start off today by just giving you the details of what is a one rep max. If you guys are in the 10-week transformation listening to this, you obviously know what that is. Uh, Some of you guys maybe have never heard that phrase before. So basically a one rep max is just how heavy can you do a particular lift one time. You can do one successful rep with, but you cannot do any more. So some of the major lifts that you might think of doing that for would be a barbell bench press, a barbell back squat, and a barbell deadlift. It's I want to go as heavy as I can where I can do one successful rep with good form, but after that I can't do any more. And so that is what a one rep max is. Essentially, it's testing your ultimate level of strength for a particular movement. Now, why is improving your one rep max valuable? Well, first off, it's essentially measuring how how much you are gaining strength over a period of time. And strength gains are really important because look, as we get older, we lose somewhere around two to 5% of our strength every single year. Now, that's not a matter of aging. It's a matter of not doing. It's a matter of not training heavy. It's a matter of not lifting heavy. And so we want to make sure that we're continually challenging ourselves with our strength gains. It's also important because look, as we get older, we need to be able to maintain our independence. We able to, we need to be able to maintain our strength and exercise like a deadlift is such, such a functional movement. You're essentially picking up with good form, a heavy load. And as you get older, you want to be able to pick up heavy things on your own and not have to have your kids do it, your grandkids do it, your neighbor do it. You want to be able to do those things on your own. And then kind of lastly, why it's valuable is because it's a way to become a stronger version of yourself. And it's fun to see yourself improve. It's fun to see yourself take your own abilities to the next level. So let's dive into this systematic approach again. This is the exact approach that we actually take in the in-person 10-week transformation. Everybody gets a workbook where they get to log their weights, their reps, on a week by week basis so that they ensure that they're going to make progress like this, following this kind of systematic approach, we don't hope for progress. We can almost guarantee progress. We feel like inevitably we're going to see progress throughout a 10 week, 10 week time frame. So here's the exact approach on a week by week basis. It starts off by doing an initial test. You need to see where you currently stand, because if you don't know how strong you currently are, then you don't have the information with which to be intentional with your weight selections moving forward. And the only way we're going to get stronger is if we are actually intentional with our weight selections throughout our program. Now, before diving into what week one looks like, what week two looks like, what week three looks like, etc., you want to ensure that before each of your working sets, before you do your first actual hard set of bench press, let's say, you want to do some warm-up sets. That can be one warm-up set, two warm-up sets, three warm-up sets, but you don't want those warm-up sets to fatigue you. You just want those warm-up sets to warm up your joints, to activate your muscles, and for you to get the technique down for that exercise. I would say probably two warm-up sets is going to be that happy medium. One warm-up set probably isn't enough. Three might potentially be fine. You just don't want to get yourself fatigued going into it. So that can just be personal preference. Now I've used the phrase working sets before. What does that actually mean? Some of you guys who have listened to the podcast or have maybe done the 10 week transformation before you know what working sets are, but to give you the the further breakdown, basically working sets are your sets that are pretty close to failure and you're being very intentional about the weights that you select. So I like to coach my clients to go off of for selecting their weights to go off of a percentage of their one rep max. So we do an initial test. Let's say their initial test on their bench press, they get 100 pounds. Then in week one, 
we're going to use our a weight of 70 to 75% of that one rep max. So the numbers are easy. If your max is 100 pounds, you would use about 70 to 75 pounds for your working sets. So you would intentionally select your weights based off of a percentage of your one rep max. And I'll give you those percentages here in just a second. And then the other thing that we're going to do is we're not just going to be intentional about our weight selection. We're going to be intentional about how many reps that we do more specifically, how close we get to failure. And so I'm going to be using the phrase reps in reserve a decent amount during this episode. Reps in reserve is essentially how close you are pushing yourself to failure, to failure, meaning that you cannot do any more successful reps with good form. And so you don't actually always want to go until failure. You want to leave some reps in reserve. Another important thing to acknowledge during your working sets is you want to ensure that obviously your form is good, but that you're moving with speed. Because when it comes to the adaptation of strength, what is actually going on inside of your muscles to get stronger is your muscles have the ability to produce more force. And force equals mass times acceleration. So force equals mass, which means essentially weight, times acceleration, which is, which is speed. So you want to ensure that when you're doing these lifts, you work with a decent amount of velocity or acceleration when you're moving the weight in the concentric manner. So not necessarily on the way down, but on the way up, you're moving with a sense of speed, obviously not losing technique and form. And the last thing I want to say before going in to this is generally speaking, rest times should be around anywhere from 90 seconds to three minutes on these lifts. I like to use a happy medium of around two minutes with my clients in the in-person 10 week transformation. The rest time is somewhere around 90 seconds to two minutes, given our time constraints. So 90 seconds to two minutes, maybe even up to two and a half to three minutes if you really, really, really need help breaking through uh, that plateau, maybe a little bit longer rest time is going to help you. But for now, just think of rest times for your working sets being anywhere between 90 seconds to two minutes in between each of these working sets. All right, you guys ready? The exact systematic approach. Now look, if you're in the 10-week transformation, I lay this out in the workbook for you guys. If you're not in the 10-week transformation, I'd really recommend that you guys write this down. So this is basically from week one to week 10, the systematic approach that we use in the 10WT to guarantee results for our clients. In week number one, it's about doing the initial test, doing the test for the bench press, the back squat, the deadlifts, so we can see where we currently stand. We obviously wanna make sure that we're safe when we're doing those. On bench press and back squat, we wanna make sure somebody's spotting. On deadlifts, we wanna make sure we've got good form before going excessively heavy. We can get full range of motion, all that kind of good stuff is things we need to be aware of when doing the initial test. Then in week two, we do three working sets of each of our lifts, the bench press, the squats, and the deadlifts, not on the same day, but three working sets at 70 to 75% of our one rep max. And we do that at about three reps in reserve. So stopping about three reps short of failure. So again, in the 10WT, we do three working sets at 70 to 75% of that one rep max with three reps in reserve. And again, using that rest time of about 90 seconds to two minutes. In week three, we do the same thing. So that's going to be the, the systematic approach. In one week, we'll have a certain percentage uh, and a certain number of reps in reserve. And we'll do that same thing two weeks in a row. We'll do that same programming two weeks in a row. So week two and three are the same. Then in week four, we're going to do three working sets, but we're going to increase the weight to 75 to 80 percent of your one rep max and going to two reps in reserve. So we're going to be progressively getting closer to failure as we progress through this programming. So week four, three sets, 75 to 80% of your one rep max, two reps in reserve, and week five will repeat. Then in week six, we're going to increase the number of working sets. We're going to go four working sets at 80 to 85% of your one rep max with one rep in reserve. Again, week six, four working sets, 80 to 85% of your one rep max, one rep in reserve. And in week seven, we're going to repeat that. And then finally, in week eight, we'll stick with four working sets, increase the weight to 85 to 90% of your one rep max, and we're going to go zero reps in reserve or all the way until failure. And in week nine, we're going to repeat that. In week 10, we are going to test. So essentially, we bookend the systematic approach with an initial test and a final test. And then we have eight weeks in the middle in which we are systematically and progressively increasing the number, uh, the, the weight that we use. And we're getting closer and closer to failure as we progress through this as well. Now, 
the three working sets that we do, you can do all of these lifts one time a week. You might ideally do them more like two times a week, or you could do them one time a week, one week, and then two times a week the next week, then back to one time a week, then back to two times a week and alternate it like that. In the 10 week transformation, we are limited to do each, uh, each lift in class one time per week. And people can go do it. Some people go do it on their own outside of class and stuff like that. If they want to really see even greater gains or really looking to break through a plateau. But one of the huge keys to all of this is to give yourself enough rest time. I think one of the biggest mistakes that I see people make is because they are getting bored or because their heart rate isn't elevated in the middle of a workout. They think I'm not working hard enough, but to get strength gains, our goal is not to elevate our heart rate. Our goal is to be intentional with our weight selections, have really good technique with our moves, and really make sure that we're moving the weight with good force throughout each of our reps and getting, clo getting close enough to failure um, during our programming. So ensuring that you're getting enough rest time is, actually, is absolutely key, and obviously ensuring that you're intentional with your weight selections is, are going to be the keys to getting guaranteed results by with your strength gains on these major lifts. So you guys, that's the blueprint. That is the systematic approach. If you want to get stronger, make sure you have those percentages written down. Make sure you have the reps and reserve written down. I want you guys to be the healthiest, strongest version of yourself that you possibly can be so that you can be confident and so that you can also maintain your independence as you get older because you want to be that badass 60, 70, 80, 90 year old who can still be independent and do everything on their own and not having to be reliant on other people in your life. Now, if you feel like seeing these kind of gains is something that would be for you, you got to join us in the next 10 week transformation. In the 5 a.m. group here in Nashville, there's a couple spots left. 6 a.m. group is full. 10 a.m. group, there's only a couple spots left as well. And then you can do it virtually as well. And in the virtual 10 week transformation, we actually follow the same approach but not with barbells, with some dumbbells. So if you're looking to break through some strength plateaus or you just want to see some strength gains and you want to build some confidence and join the next 10-week transformation, we'll go from October 7th to December 13th. You can join by going to nickcarrier.com slash 10WT. We will guarantee you that you'll make strength gains because of our proven systematic approach and methodology to gaining and building strength. Make sure you guys like and subscribe to this YouTube page. If you're new here, if you're listening on Apple Podcasts and Spotify, make sure you hit the follow button so you get notified each time a new episode comes out because we're going to continue to bring the fire so that you can be the healthiest, leanest, strongest version of yourself that you possibly can be. Therefore, the best version of yourself that you possibly can be. If you want help with that, join the next 10-week transformation by going to nickcarrier.com slash 10WT. But other than that, I hope today helps you get closer to the healthiest version of yourself. And ultimately, I hope today helps you get closer and closer to your best you. Thank you.